Thank you, Mr. Chair. I call up Cortez Masto, Amendment 74, a vote. Um, this amendment um, re would reinstate the CFPB's arbitration rulemaking, which was uh, recently invalidated with a Congressional Review Act vote. It's a straightforward amendment. It reinstates the uh, forced arbitration rulemaking um, that the CFPB adopted with an exemption for depositories with less than $10 billion in assets. Um, when, and when some of my colleagues, with the help of um, Vice President Pence on a razor-thin margin, struck down the CFPB's rule in October, they um, claimed, and I was listening, it, it, it was about helping community banks and credit unions. Um, in fact, the White House, in their press statement upon striking down the rule, claimed they were standing up for community banks and credit unions. This amendment gives uh, this committee the chance to make things right and to leave 98% of banks and credit unions in this country unaffected. It makes sense since community financial institutions are less inclined to use forced arbitration clauses anyway. This way we can focus on the real need for a rule to give consumers their day in court. We all know um, why the underlying rule is needed. And we've sat through the hearings. Take the case of Wells Fargo, 3.5 million fake accounts and credit products opened. In Nevada alone, the bank created 121,000 unauthorized accounts. And as recently as September of this year, Wells Fargo was trying to force consumers out of court and into a secret arbitration system, even on the accounts borrowers never wanted in the first place. Um, and then there's Equifax, the credit bureau whose lax security practices led to the breach of 1.3 million Nevadans' most sensitive personal information um, that subjects them to identity theft and, um, quite frankly, for the rest of their lives, trying to clear their good name. At first, Equifax tried to force consumers to accept an arbitration clause just to protect their identity in the wake of the data breach. Only after an unprecedented public outcry did the company reverse that course. And even still, Equifax continues to use a forced arbitration clause in some of the products it offers. In the short time since Equifax breach was disclosed, my office has received more than four dozen constituent letters expressing outrage and seeking justice over this unprecedented scandal. And I know my colleagues have received the same constituent calls. If this bill is about ensuring consumer protection, there's no better chance to do than that by passing this amendment. The CFPB's rule has the support of a diverse coalition of more than 300 organizations representing civil rights, consumer, student, service member, and faith groups. This is important for consumers. Back home in Reno, Nevada, the American Legion had their national convention in August. And at that convention, they adopted a resolution supporting the Consumer Bureau rule saying it is, quote, extremely unfair to bar service members, veterans, and other consumers from joining together to enforce statutory and constitutional protections in court. In addition to a broad range of groups representing the interests of consumers, 11 separate legal experts from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, wrote to Congress to endorse the benefits of the CFPB rule. Finally, uh, like myself, we, we have former AGs here on this committee. We all know that access to justice is essential and that private enforcement of contract, uh, contracts enhances law enforcement's ability to target schemes and frauds. You don't have to be a former attorney general. You don't have to be a former prosecutor or even an attorney to know that you're right and you should have a choice to a court. Access to a court should never be taken away from anyone, any consumer, and this amendment is about giving some meaningful relief to consumers. If this amendment were adopted, it would substantially and meaningfully help service members, students, and seniors, and I ask for my colleagues' support. Thank you, yeah. Senator, Senator Rounds. If I could, um, I recognize that this amendment would amend Title III to add a new section that would restore the CFPB's final arbitration agreements rule. And it would also exempt uh, banks and credit unions with less than $10 billion in total assets from the CFPB's final arbitration agreements rule. But Congress and the President have already spoken on the issue of pre-dispute arbitration agreements by repealing the CFPB's flawed rule, prohibiting pre-dispute class action waivers in arbitration agreements this last October. The CFPB simply failed to demonstrate that consumers would have fared better under its arbitration rule. For that reason, I would respectfully ask the committee for a no vote. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there further debate? May, may I respond? Uh, I appreciate my colleagues' comments, but if Congress has already responded uh, and this White House has responded, um, if that were true, then why are we looking to roll back the regulations on Dodd-Frank? Because Congress has already spoken. So I, I would ask that if we really want consumer relief and we're really fighting for consumers here, this is common sense. It's what I heard my colleagues say when they oppose this. It exempts out um, those credit unions and those community banks, and it really makes sense. Why take away an individual's choice to the courtroom? Thank you.